can you explain me how did you uh, decide to become an interpreter? Oof, uh, we have 30 minutes maybe? No. Um, <laughs> very, very quickly, I actually started by luck, if you want, and because I wanted to help people. I started very, very young and uh, obviously unofficially as an interpreter. I was still in high school and there was an NGO that uh, I was living in Ecuador at the time in Guayaquil. And my dad was an expat. It was international American school and they needed volunteers and guys to go and help in a hospital when this group of doctors, nurses, et cetera, et cetera, came to, to Guayaquil. So I did that. And, um, we started when we were in high school. We used to go to the hospital and serve as um, really, you know, a liaison between, you know, the parents, the children, the doctors, etc. And then it evolved and it evolved and it evolved. And at one point um, I was, um, you know, I had uh, a non-interpreting job, nine to five, but they kept on calling me, um, especially American uh, companies and everything. And um, finally, I just said, um, yeah, this is it. And um, I ended up being an interpreter full time. And, and that's what I did. You ask me how I ended up there. Now I ask you, how did you end up in Interprefy, being a project manager? I decided it's time to change uh, mm -hmm. and to look for additional, uh, another opportunity where I can mm -hmm. have a global career and the present. So Interprefy came on the LinkedIn, I applied and after a couple of interviews, I joined the team and it was a two and a half years ago. At the first, it was like so strange, like, is it event industry? Is it like uh, just regarding uh, interpretation or just translation? And slowly I got into the role and um, with each new month each new project i was learning more and more technical stuff about this very specific uh industry and niche uh, so yeah it's been a really quick adventure uh but it's lasting for two and a half years as i mentioned but it seems like for me it's even longer because we have so many different uh projects uh and collaborators that work with us so uh, when it comes to an uh, interpreter platform, uh, what do you like about it, especially when working on our platform? Well, uh, I, I need to confess, uh, this is quite a poly-love relationship um, mm -hmm. because um, I, I'd love Interprefy and, and two, I, I have three lovers right now in RSI. Um, two of them start with an I. One that starts with a K and um, with, with Interprefy. And I think this is why you are, to me at least, on, in, in the top, which is the human factor, um, which to me is very, very extremely important. It's not just you're good on the technical side, you need to be human. So Interprefy has that. And um, if you go to what we need as interpreters, you are very robust, you're a very solid, your, your platform works really, really well. So, and along with that comes the human side, which is not just human touch, but it's also being professional, not because you're on the other side of the screen, but you have very good project managers. Um, and I deal with Interprefy uh, so far, not directly, but with one of your major I think it's your major hiring for interpreters. It's, it's an agency in the US. You know, you're very concerned. So what I see from the agency is their project managers are very concerned about having them, us having the material, having the information on time to the extent possible. And I infer that that goes along with um, Interprefy because they must have somebody in Interprefy giving them that information from their end client, which is, what we need. Do, do you think we interpreters, most of the interpreters know what you do uh, prior to getting to you? It starts with sales, then other people. Could you tell me a little bit more about that? How, how many people sure. are involved in, in, in a huge, you, a you know, <laughs> in, in a big event? Because people just think it's you or whoever we have on the other side of the screen. And a lot of my colleagues sometimes are quite picky. They you know, they complain a lot and make your life miserable. And I don't think it's fair. <laughs> 
Yeah, thank you. Thank you for understanding and uh, outlining that uh, really important uh, topic, which is about understanding each other's rules. And I think that is something that we maybe can bring some value from this uh, interview. Uh, so when it comes to collaborations uh, on small or bigger uh, events, it can be just a couple of the persons, it can be a huge team, both from the, let's say, agency side uh, or LSB who, who is engaging the interpreters and both for the client end. Sometimes we are not in direct communication with the end client and the users, but with some reseller, for example. So it's even harder for us. The chain of communication is really long and distant until we get the information that we need. So for example, uh, on some of the projects, we have a direct contact with just the client, plus there is maybe a venue manager, AV providers and technicians, uh, plus maybe uh, some assistants who are working or particular uh, items on the projects, plus interpreters, managers, interpreters directly. Sometimes interpreters can be uh, engaged from the client end, so we need to be in the loop with our training team. Uh, also, the sales manager are uh, really important. Uh, roles in our day-to-day uh, -day communication because when it comes to some commercial updates we also need to follow up back with them the client needs to agree and etc each of the small changes can impact really really much and we need to react really quickly for the project manager the best let's say way to adapt to any change is to uh, react quickly so we need to be really agile and include all the relevant people in the communication sometimes let's say the time zone can be wrong maybe somehow somebody haven't figured out that the daylight uh, time is being changed at the particular time when the event is happening so we need to remind that and when you mention uh, the materials. Uh, we are constantly pushing clients, okay, can we get any kind of the materials, agenda, slides, even some videos. Uh, some of them are really eager to share, some are not, because maybe sometimes the topic can be very sensitive. Uh, they wish to have a security on really high level, so uh, they cannot provide all of the material. But when the terminology is really uh, specific, we really insist. Uh, sometimes even I, list, uh, I receive um, materials before the event happens, let's say 30 minutes during the preparation. So I provide the information to the RS team support. Okay, can you just remind interpreters to check their email? I sent the last minute changes and some slides, maybe it will be useful for them. So yeah, I think it's about understanding each other role, how stressful can be, uh, and of course, how demanding clients can be. So we need to, uh, let's say, align that understanding uh, and let's say be a bit more uh, patient about things getting done. Is there a yeah. way that we can make your life easier, interpreters, from our side, once we communicate with the project managers. Um, and yeah. I think we need to do our mea culpa and say, okay, uh, what, what can we do to give you a hand? Yeah, uh, thank you. Thank you for that question. Uh, I think that in when the time comes when the uh, event is happening already, uh, when some technical issues maybe arises or um, I don't know, your partner maybe is not collaborating or the event is happening for a little bit longer, um, address that with moderator first. And I'm assuring you, they are definitely escalating that to the project managers. So I would say like um, to calm down a bit, to not stress too much, to not overreact at first when something uh, unexpected happen because everybody are in the same situation. So let's say to uh, have an understanding at the same level and a bit more patience. In. What does an ideal RSI assignment look for you? The one where everything goes well. No, the, the, the ideal assignment, uh, probably in RSI, in RSI, definitely, it includes, um, how would I say this? The good old speakers and participants paying attention, um, which is related, you know, paying attention from the beginning, 
and this is related to what I think sales should do, which is to be very clear with the client, especially telling them, look, you need to have good sound. You need to have a headset and you don't need to spend 400 euro buying a super microphone. You can buy something today for 30 euro, 20 euro, and it will make a difference. You know, do not use your tablet. Do not sit on the couch and speak with the tablet, just looking at it like that, because it is just not good, not good. So an ideal assignment, the one where participants have a very stable internet connection, wired ethernet <laughs> uh, with good sound, um, great partner that makes the difference. Um, and I believe you know, maybe when, when you, uh, some of us have been doing RSI for a while. So now we know who we are comfortable with. And it is funny because sometimes you work very well with partners in RSI. And I don't think you will have the same relationship and chemistry if you were in a set booth, in a traditional mm -hmm. booth. Um, so the ideal will be having material, good sound. To me, that's crucial. Um, it goes hand in hand with with internet. Uh, unfortunately, not all countries have, and now we are so global that we might have participants from some countries where the internet doesn't work, but then we have to be understanding and patience. Having a good uh, booth partner, and I think that will make, make it ideal. Question for you, um, because I asked you before, what is it that could make it easier for you? Now is, mm -hmm. if you could dream, what is one thing you wish the interpreters knew about your job? Okay, L let me dream a bit. <laughs> uh, I think that um, just our uh, efforts that we make for all the things to be done and that we are not working on just one project, but many simultaneously. Uh, and sometimes when the peak comes as it is the case now it can be really stressful the workload is huge our mailboxes are all already full and we are receiving just new and new things we need to make the priority when our day starts so because there's a lot of job to do a lot of projects to be handled by so uh our our job is really versatile and uh still um we need let's say that understanding again uh and just to be more aware of the scope of the work of the project manager so we are providing all of the documents to client to make sure they are aware if they don't follow the rules what will be the impact on the outcome of the result um, and the service they are receiving but sometimes uh the documentation can be uh, so big and they forget to read and it happens yeah. our job is to remind them of course but when the event is already in the preparation and they comes there is not so much we can do especially when some of the uh, projects uh, have pre-recorded video also we are mentioning to the client pay attention to this pay attention to that but sometimes all those messages can be lost. We are trying to outline what is the most important. And then along the way, if we see there are some troubles, of course, we are trying to address this, but we also understand that uh, there are managers who are handling on the client end uh, the event. Uh, they are also really stressful on the day of the event and they are just like pushing information all over the place. So yeah, uh, I think that understanding of the scope of the works and the role is really important for everybody. And as you mentioned, to go in somebody else's shoes to try to understand and see that point of view and then come back and like, okay, I will adapt to it. Connected to what you just said, you just said could, mm -hmm. could you tell me some precious moment being a project manager and working with crazy interpreters like ourselves, that moment where you said, ah, oh, this was just great. Do you have one instance, one event somewhere, somehow highlighting your career where you said, ah, oh, I'm in heaven? Yeah, uh, interesting question, because when everybody's asked me about 
my favorite things, favorite movie, favorite world destination. I cannot say just once because every project, every every trip is special and has uh, its own story. So I would say again, every project is special, but of course there are some that I will remember most because maybe of a lot of stress. And then at the end, we have really positive feedbacks, which were not only for our team, but also for the interpreters. And then I feel really like um, grateful for uh, everybody's uh, effort to make these things done um, and we pass all the uh, feedback to um, all contributors so those moments when we finished something really tough which was lasting eternally or we spend a really a lot of time in preparation uh, when it comes to an end and when we receive a positive feedback from the client and they are eager to work more and more with us I think that is the highlight of every project and the confirmation for all team members that we did again a great job. Knowing what you know now, uh, how your perception changed about working with project managers, or maybe you can pass your uh, change of perception to your colleagues. Um, I, I think more the latter. I, um, I'm, I'm a big advocate of, again, wearing somebody else's shoes. Um, you know, in big, big corporations, uh, there's a huge uh, hoteliers, I mean, hotel group, a hotel chain. And um, even if you're the manager, general manager of a facility of a hotel, every so often you need to go to housekeeping. You need to go to being a bellboy. You need to be a doorman, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and it happened to me once um, because I knew who the manager was and I walked into a hotel and I found him, you know, with a little big hat uh, saying, hello and welcome to our, and I was like, that is a general manager. So it really helps. I don't know if I have changed after speaking to you, what I believe you were doing. I've learned a lot. Um, and it has just confirmed again and again that we are, we need to work together. We are a team. Um, and, and I think uh, to the extent possible, if I can pass it on to my colleagues, um, and sometimes I get in trouble because they tell me, oh, you side with the agency, you side with the project manager, uh, you have to have a spirit de corp. You, you are one of us. You cannot be with them. And I always say, hmm, yes and no. Um, because when we make a mistake, we need to say, we're wrong. Just like you said, we need to be polite. We need to ask politely. And we cannot forget that there's a huge supply change, uh, chain uh, behind you, um, which to me, it's crucial. And it's sales. If sales does a good job and explains to the client, eventually that makes your job easier. And eventually it makes our job easier. We can get there like we used to do years ago and just walk in do our job, get out, and everything's going to be great. We have much more uh, things to worry about, you know, many, many more. Uh, we need to worry about the technical side, the issues, having two monitors, two screens, uh, two microphones for backup, blah, 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 which we never had before. So I, I think my, my, you have confirmed what I thought you went through, which is a lot. And I'm very, very respectful for that. I, but I have huge respect because your job is not easy. You deal with many issues that go beyond knowledge and technical things, and you're dealing with people. And human management is not easy. So chapeau um, <laughs> to you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I really appreciate that, that point of view. Um, I, I, I think we interpreters need to be or need to be made aware of, of what is behind. Um, again, a lot of, uh, of interpreters forget. Um, and, and you have human people, you have human beings there, you have, you know, and they go through a lot, they go through hell. <laughs> like you said, some events have maybe five, six, seven people between you and the end client, and you never get to speak to the end client. 
you have a meeting planner, then you have a project manager, then you have the production company, project manager, manager, bam, 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 bam. and it's like, <laughs> and why can't you get the material faster? Because I sent yeah. the email, I got no response. What can I do? You know? Yeah. Know. Sometimes, as you mentioned, the communication plan can be a page or two. Like I have so many contacts and I need to make sure everybody are within the communication chain. But as you mentioned, and um, I would like to add this as a conclusion, although we are now working remotely and we are digitalized, we don't have a personal touch like, uh, but virtual, uh, we try to we we should try not to forget that human touch and warmth in our work because work is not just about getting things done because you will work again and again with the same people and colleagues and collaborators why don't you bring some personal touch uh, appreciate them make sure they know their value and the next time the collaboration will be even better smoother and easier Thank you.